I'm Doug Goldstein. This show is about taking care of your money now so that your money will take care of you in the future. We've got investment profiles, tips of the week, financial strategies, and best of all, we've got fabulous guests. I hope you'll enjoy today's guest on the Goldstein on Geld Show. Listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, Money Maven Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking with Joe Titlow, who is with Z Corporation. He joined the company in 2004. Z Corporation makes a phenomenal tool, which we'll refer to as the Z Printer uh, for a moment. He is uh, he joined the company from Ford Motor Company, where he was involved in product development. And he's talking to us today about what this really neat 3D printer is all about. Joe, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having us on. Maybe you could just start by telling us what is a 3D printer? Yeah, a 3D printer is essentially a technology that can take a three-dimensional shape from a computer and fabricate an actual physical object uh, from that kind of detailed design description that's in the computer. So it sounds sort of like Star Trek, right? <laughs> it's a little bit like Star Trek. Uh, it basically takes a digital design and creates an actual physical object, uh, almost starting with nothing. Um, the process is basically one um, that takes that design, slices it up into hundreds and thousands sometimes of layers, recreates those layers one on top of another, um, and by selectively, in our case, binding a powder that gets spread across the entire build area, we selectively bind it with a liquid binder material that creates a physical slice, if you will, and then we add up all those slices vertically to create an actual physical 3D object. Uh -huh. So it has to be something that's like a block, so it can build up like that? Uh, it has to be anything that is actually a solid object. Uh, so the detail and the amount of geometry is kind of completely unconstrained. It's one of the great um, kind of things about this sort of fabrication uh, approach is that unlike traditional manufacturing where you have certain constraints uh, based on the tooling or the process of how things work, here we say you get complexity for free and the machine doesn't care what shape it's making as long as it's an actual physical, uh, you know, solid object. It can't just be a, a surface, if you will, that doesn't have a third dimension. So, for example, a slinky would be something you could make? Uh, absolutely, yeah. We could, we could print out the, the shape of a slinky. The, uh, I mean, you, you look around you, any physical object you're looking at right now uh, that you see in front of you is something that could be created on a 3D printer. And what if it has parts inside, like a stapler? Uh, so practically, if you're going to make a stapler, you probably make it um, in a few different parts, uh, and you can assemble it today. That's how it's done. And a 3D printer, you can actually have all those parts be included in the design, and it would basically build assembled. And so the, what comes out of the machine is a compilation of multiple different parts. And uh, if designed properly, those parts can actually interact and move amongst one another. No kidding. So in, in theory, if you were really good at designing it, you could put the design into the machine and come out and then staple a couple of pieces of paper together? Uh, yeah, in theory, you absolutely could. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't actually tried to make a stapler myself, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you can, you can you know, have all the detailed design there that you need. Um, you probably have to, uh, to put the staples in, but uh, it wouldn't come out with staples inside of it. But uh, you know, yeah, a good designer could make that working right out of the machine. So what are some of the cool things that, in fact, you have designed and produced and printed? You know, it's, it's amazing that we have access to technology here at Z Corporation, and we do lots of fun things. I mean, we've, I've made replacement parts for my car, and we have engineers here that make, you know, kind of rockets and, and um, uh, trebuchets and, you know, all kinds of fun toys and, you know, things that we like to play with. Uh, but what's really amazing is what our customers make. And this spans, you know, the entire kind of spectrum of anybody, you, you know, that you can come across uh, that works in 3D or has a 3D shape in a computer ends up printing it out. And so 
this can be anything from kind of completely artistic to the most technical kind of research uh, laboratory doing design work for, for technical products. Um, there's also applications in architecture and in medical. Uh, and so what really blows me away is just the breadth of things that get made uh, every day on the technology. I actually first came across your company by seeing a video online about some of the uh, about where you recreated a wrench. Um, it, it, at the time, it seemed to me, and I think maybe even mentioned it, that if you could have a device like this, for example, on a ship or a submarine or in space, that if ever there's a problem, you the the the, the ship or the engineer on the ship could simply make the device that he needs to fix the problem. Is is that being done, or is that is that a realistic possibility? Uh, absolutely. So the, the research now and kind of the prototypes of those setups are being um, set up now and studied by defense organizations and uh, kind of others around the world um, that have that kind of what we'll call it advanced need. But today there are actually businesses using it in a very similar way. And that is, um, like one example is a company that makes uh, large pump impellers. And so these are one-off devices that are kind of very large. They're very unique. And um, occasionally they break. And so when they break, it's a big deal because it's usually some giant pump that's very critical to some process. And so they need to get a new one fabricated very quickly um, and get it put back on the machine. In the case of a pump impeller, it's made out of metal. So what they do with our technology is they make a pattern for that casting. Uh, but they're able to scan it and then recreate that in just a matter of, you know, it's usually a day or two. And then from that pattern, essentially create the actual metal piece that ends up getting put back in the system and bringing it right back online. Wow, that's amazing. We are talking to Joe Titlow, who is with Z Corporation. The company makes 3D printers. How can we call them printers, by the way? They're not actually printing like a laser printer, are they? <laughs> no, it is one of the misnomers that's it's a little bit confusing to folks. But the technology that underpins our, our machines is essentially a printing technology. It's an inkjet printing technology. No kidding. So I understand that there are companies in Israel and schools, including the Technion, which use uh, which use your product. Any other companies in Israel that uh, that that people would know, perhaps they're sitting on a on a uh, Z Corporation product. <laughs> yeah, there's many companies around the world. I think in in Israel we have a number of universities. Uh, the Technion that you mentioned, uh, Shenkar, HIT, uh, College of Management, uh, a few universities using it. There's also a number of organizations, I think, uh, in your defense industry that are using it. Uh, a company uh, called Catcher Plastics, which people might be familiar sure. with. There, everyone yeah. has a Catcher chair in his, either in his living room or in the, on his porch, in order to, to sit outside. Yeah. Uh, so those and other companies uh, have access to technology either directly by owning a machine um, or by working with what we call a service bureau, basically an independent organization that runs the machines. Uh, that can kind of create the parts for uh, an individual, like another company that wants uh, just the part and not necessarily to, to run the machine. Are, are these machines only meant on the institutional level, or is this something that you know I might buy to keep at home? At this point, the target is really those folks that are doing three-dimensional design. So the core of our market is anyone who has the job of creating um, a physical object that's going to be manufactured one day, and you know there's a lot of value in that. Um, so the price points start uh, at around 10,000 euros for the entry-level product and kind of go up from there. So it's not quite uh, at a price point that's accessible in the home market today. But as we talk about the future and what's possible, uh, you know, this technology used to cost 100,000 euros not that long ago. Today it's about 10,000 euros. And in the future it's certainly going to be uh, much less. And, you know, there will certainly be a day where you'll have one of these uh, probably in your home. And can you only print in on, into plastic? You mentioned the company that needed metal, but is it possible to do this with with different substances? Uh, it is. And at Z Corporation, we have a history of uh, using a few different material substrates to get slightly different material properties. We've ended up kind of focusing on one material now because it, it really is very versatile and provides a lot of use for all the core use occasions today. But as a research organization, we're doing additional research to figure out you know other materials uh, in the future. But our portfolio today does include a few specialty materials, we call them, that offer uh, you know, kind of very flexible rubber-like performance, uh, or that the one that I mentioned earlier that's specifically targeted at kind of creating casting patterns or casting uh, molds. A company would not use this as a production line, right? This is really only meant for a one-off type of print? Uh, typically, that's the case, certainly, today, is that this is used as what we call prototype. 
so you have a design idea and you want a first iteration or second or third and, and you want the prototypes to give you that feedback. Usually it's not cost effective to then, you know, take it to market with the digital fabrication of a 3D printer being your production technique. Um, usually there's a lower cost way to manufacture, you know, mass market goods. But what we have seen now is this kind of uh, interesting kind of pockets of the industry where the customization of the end product is actually of good value or the volume is relatively low essentially and so it doesn't make sense to scale up a large manufacturing and then the actual end product is created uh, and sometimes now on a 3D printer and then that digitally fabricated device that's totally unique uh, wow. is what ends up getting sold to an end customer. That's amazing. You described your company also as a research company. Is this a for-profit company? Is it a are you funded by uh, by a government or a university? Uh, no, we uh, we are a private company. Yeah, that's um, you know has investors here in the states, uh, fully funded and, and operating privately. Um, the initial idea was developed at the university level, uh, the University of MIT here in the states, and uh, it was spun out in kind of the the early '90s uh, as an independent company, and since then has been privately funded. I see. Are there investment opportunities for people who are who, who see this as the future? Uh, I think in terms of uh, the investment in us as a corporation, uh, not really. We're, we're very well capitalized. We uh, you know, have all the funding that we need. Uh, but if you want to get involved, there's opportunities to kind of uh, basically one of the biggest areas is to get on board with us and resell uh, the technology or find a way to integrate this technology into new spaces. So we talked briefly you know, about uh, applications in medical or in architecture or in visual arts. There's a lot of what we call these fringe applications that have so much opportunity. And so if there's somebody out there that has an idea of how you could apply this technology to you know, what they do every day, uh, be it 3D animation or medical or you know, whatever it could be, uh, there's tremendous opportunities, we think, to create entirely new businesses you know, on the back of this technology. Fabulous. It sounds like a great technology. We have been talking to Joe Titlow, who is with the Z Corporation, that makes a fascinating uh, 3D printer. You can look it up also on YouTube and see a video because we've only been discussing it. Uh, Joe, in the last couple of seconds, could you just tell people how they could learn more about what your company is doing? Uh, absolutely. So we have a, a website based here in the States, www.zcorp.com. So that's Z-C-O-R-P.com. Uh, or locally, our reseller is Caliber Engineering. And so that's caliber.co.il. In Israel. Okay, Joe Titlow from the Z Corporation, thanks very much for talking to us today. Yeah, thank you. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to Doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.